The Audi A1 is, amongst other things, the car my mother owns. It is also, seemingly at least, quite expensive, yet sat within the highly saturated automotive category that is hatchbacks, perhaps a bit gimmicky and fundamentally smaller than any of its current Vosburg Duck Technique family relatives. But is this all actually true? Well, as I say, my mum has one, which I've been driving on Exmoor, so let's find out. Welcome to Max's monthly column. Let's crack on. One thing is for sure, the A1 is the smallest car in the current Audi range. And straight away that starts alarm bells ringing, in the same way they'd ring if McDonald's ever began serving starters. They might well know how to pull off a big V8 powered RS6 Big Mac burger, but a little mini hatchback prawn cocktail might not be such a strength of theirs. Everyone knows Audi can nail together a well-built, sturdy, big or long car, but have their efforts been transferable onto the new, much littler model? Well, getting into the A1 is a bit like climbing into a small cave. A nicely glued together, well-built cave, but a cave nevertheless. You'll do well to drive or be driven in decent comfort if you're any more than six and a bit foot tall. But in fairness, the boot is a good size and there are three seats in the back, which are hugely functional if human rights aren't considered. It's the Bluetooth system that really ticks me off. It is about as useful as a cheese sun hat. The A1 size deficit I can sort of understand. It's a small car, so it's small inside, fine. But the Bluetooth system is honestly, genuinely useless. Once paired, your phone drops in and out of connectivity like driving through Chernobyl. And the irony of the situation is you spend more time looking down at the dashboard to see if everything's connected than you do at the road. It's not good enough from an automotive powerhouse like Audi and the Volkswagen Group. Really, it isn't. The elephant that would have been in the room, if it had fitted, is the price. Even Mum's one point nothing Turbo Sport with its winter pack interior and less than decent infotainment system is £23,000, and that's a lot for a car with a one litre three cylinder engine. I mean it's top spec beefy engine Polo GTI money, plus a bit more, but it does include an electric sunroof which slam dunks your bill by £900, along with a five month additional weight on delivery. And why? I mean, you can buy a very well-equipped small VW car with far less than that. Mum's small-engined A1 is six or seven grand more expensive than your average Ford Fiesta, which, statistically speaking, is the UK's most popular car with nearly 100,000 orders in 2018 alone. Well, let's not ruin my chances of an invite to the Audi Christmas party just yet. The A1 is a brilliant little car. It's refreshing to be at the wheel of a properly well-built small hatchback that doesn't rattle every time you hit a small bump. There are hundreds of competitors from the likes of Vauxhall, Ford and Fiat etc, but the A1 offers quality and sophistication where the competition offers simply practicality and utilitarianism. Each of the five doors, including the boot, make a lovely weighted bourgeois whoop as they close, as opposed to the proletariat and frankly hollow sounding k of that of the competition. And that, along with its intriguing exterior paint combination options and trendy electric sunroof, are what make the A1 special. Suddenly, with the astonishing gearbox click manually into third, and it really does click into gear, you can dart about like a determined sperm, finding grunt where one litre engines of yesteryear would have not. The steering is electric, but do you know what? It's not half bad. It's a synthesised and slightly artificial experience compared to that of the prehistoric hydraulic system, but there's a nice amount of feeling through the wheel, and you know where the front wheels are pointing constantly. Throw the thing into a roundabout and it won't let you down. A niggle of understeer, but it all comes true by the end. Just don't get caught out with the turbo departing you when you're on two lower revs in second gear. The suspension could do with a tiny little stiffen up for my liking, but hey, it gives for a buoyant and cosy ride, which is what the masses want. It's exciting to drive, and there's so little power from the one litre turbo petrol engine, uh, you can literally use all of it all of the time. On Exmoor, it was a blast. I'd liked about 400 more cc in the block and about 50 more brake horsepowers on the hills, but actually not having to worry about how fast you'll be going and simply planting your foot down constantly is the fun of it. You can concentrate on keeping the thing on the right bit of road. And the noise, I think there's a cheeky little tuned valve within the exhaust. It growls like a hormonal rabbit when it moves away, especially if you're hoping to get to 60 miles an hour within 10 seconds. It's great, it really is. And the 220 brake horsepower Bigger Brother S1 is a car I am very, very intrigued to drive. But the A1 is cool, that's the thing, it stands out from the cheaper alternatives, is very well made, does have an utterly silly Bluetooth system, but is nevertheless trendy. A bit like deciding to get a mortgage and buy a pair of Gucci shoes instead of the typical Adidas retro attire most others have opted for. But like a pair of Oakley sunglasses, the Audi is useful as well as fashionable. It is not, I'm happy to report, all talk and no walk. It is a brilliant little car. 
Although I, I do want to go in that S1. 